All right, uh, welcome back to the full card breakdown for UFC AE8. It's your boy Ellen Page, and we're uh, we're back with another. <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to do it. To oh do it. man! <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had no choice. I had no choice to. Oh, Sorry, man. let me let me reset. What have y'all done to him? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, that was perfect. Sorry. Um, all right. Yeah. So we're, anyway, we're um we're back with another breakdown. Now, I you know I, I might look like a little bit of a disgruntled lesbian, but you know we're we're pretty good at bringing the banter and we're pretty good at bring, bringing the picks around here, brother. So hopefully we can get another card spot on. I think we've been doing pretty well in the last few weeks. So you know, choo choo yeah. and all that. Uh, first thing I just want to get out of the way before we get like fully into things. Um, I want to thank everyone who attended the uh, the live drunk along uh, for UFC 299. Yeah, yeah it was that was a, that was a, that was a success. It, it, was a it, success. it was a success. I really thought I was going to be there. I said this on stream as well. I thought I was going to be sat there by myself, getting hammered and just crying, being like nobody gives a <laughs> shit. But it was it was um it was a raging success. You know, we had like. We had a lot of people popping in and out. The interaction was fantastic. Um, yeah. So shout out to people like Dougie and those people from who came over from his stream. Um, for sure. And his community. Mikey. It was a sure. lot of fun. My, yeah. Mikey always is the man as well. Love having Mikey around. Um, Weston was another one who popped in. So everyone who was there, mm -hmm. like mad love. Um, and we're going to be doing another one on the weekend. So um, look out for that. Um, anyway, how you doing, brother? How you feeling about this card? What are your man. thoughts? Uh, you know what? This card has some sleeper good fights. Like, um, this is one of those, and I hate to use the expression, but like, this is if Dana was talking about if you know, you know, like these, this has some fights, some if you know, you know type fights, but, mm. um, it's got some, some really good fighters, even lower on the card in the prelims. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had some good. really bad things to say about this card because at, at a flash glance, it looks horrific. But when you actually start looking into it, I, like, I'm not going to turn around and say it's the best card in the world. But there, you know what? When to, when when people are scrapping, it's always worth a watch. And there's definitely mm -hmm. some people on here that are worth looking out for. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll get straight into things. Then we've got the first fight on the prelims. We've got Grigoriu versus. I'm just going to say Chad. I'm not going to try to pronounce his surname. I'm still a bit hungover. It's only three days later and I'm old. So <laughs> don't expect me to be pronouncing anything with more than two or three syllables on this one. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this one brief. Uh, despite what I just said about this card having a few bangers on it, I don't feel like this is one of them. Uh, I couldn't give less of a fuck about this one. Um, I don't think either guy is particularly amazing. Um, I think chad is being underestimated a little bit in this one you know i think he's very durable the record doesn't look great i think he's reasonably well-rounded the issue for me is like i'd usually be picking him without much hesitation but he is taking this one on short notice and that does make me a little bit nervous um i can't really pick gregorio either because again fighting cans seems to make hard work of it so i think this one is primed to go over 2.5 but I do like Chad as a live dog, and if I was going to make any bet on a fight of one way or the other, I'd probably go with him just because the money's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair to say. Um, this is not a fight that I would put any money on. But and then and then Chad, I think it's Anne Hel El Anne Helga. Anne Helger, Helger, Anne Helga, yeah. one of them. Um, I I think. <laughs> Um, he has a, a win over uh, Gufferov, this beard back. Um, he's got a, a, a win over that dude, um, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Um, but I don't know. I think if if I were putting or leaning one way or the other, it would be to Gregorio. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is one that, you know, if you forgot that the fight started at this time and you missed it, you'd be okay. 
yeah, I am going to be okay missing this one. So, um, yeah, like I said, any it might throw up a few surprises. I just, yeah, again, Gregorio, I just think has the advantage just because of the lack of he's he's known about this fight for a while. Whereas mm -hmm. Angeliger is kind of stepping in, and that's always a risk. But I think he's a better fighter. We'll see. Um, all right, next one, Cake. <laughs> we've got um, we've got Amarim versus McKenna. Now, when I say Cake, I'm obviously talking about one side of this fight and not the other, because this is basically like you know, I've kind of built this one as like the bikini model versus the, you know, librarian. That's kind of how this yeah. one is. They've got those that look about them. Um, I'm gonna. And you know, with me sometimes, I've been guilty in the past of like picking the hot of fire just because they're hot. You know, I'm shallow. You know, what can I say? This, you know, it's despite looking true. like Ellen Page, I'm still like, I'm surprisingly <laughs> shallow. You know, um, <laughs> you know, I just think like look at looking at the matchup itself. There's a few variables that concern me a little bit. Um, like the reach advantage was something that caught me off guard. You know, Amarim has. Amarim is not a long rin a long lived it a long limbed individual. But you know, McKenna's got like a I think it's like a 53 inch reach or something crazy like that. She's got these little T-Rex arms. And you know, yeah. Amarim, yeah, Amarim's like BJJ is, is solid, but you know, she's not she's not exactly a killer down there. You know, McKenna's obviously working at Alpha Mel. I just think she's gonna be stronger, and I think she's gonna be the more active striker. So despite her tiny limbs. Um, and how young she is, I'm going to go with McKenna. Not a bad pick. Um, I this one's hard to pick as well because it's it's almost like looking at what they've done previously, they kind of negate each other. But Corey McKenna does have a good win over uh, Cheyenne Vlismus. Um and Amarim. I think she beat uh, Montserrat Ruiz which Ruiz doesn't even need to be in that division. She's too small. So um, I got to lean towards Corey McKenna, but, but I will go against the grain. And this is really, this is actually exactly what you said. I think that Amram is the better looking person. So I'm going to go with her. <laughs> I'm going to lean that I'm direction. Color, color me surprised. Flipping I the was... coin. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the only place you're going to come to where, you know, you know, the fights will be, or the outcome of fights will be determined by, you know, yeah. stuff like that, really. Well, it is when, it is, is. when it's, when it's this close, you gotta, you, you gotta, gotta go, go one you, way you or gotta the other. go with your, um, your heart or in this case, you know, somewhere else. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, this is, this is one you don't bet on. No, that's, I that's would. what we'll say. That is, you know, there's. There's there's definitely strong cases on both sides for where you can go with this. Unless one. you're betting the over um, on on rounds. the other is very appealing. Yeah. The other overs. I mean, it's, I've said this. It's a, it's a cop out that I use so often, but whenever two women are fighting that are particularly, I don't want to say they're unskilled because that's that's really unfair. But like you know, when they're just not, you don't you can't see that explosive finish finishing ability in either yeah. of them because mm -hmm. with men you never know if a, you know it's just how it is it's how genetics work a man catches another man at the right sweet spot with women mm -hmm. it's just much harder especially when the technical skill isn't there that's all i'll say i'm trying to be nice yeah it, i mean it's true like and, and a lot of women are very very technical but they just don't have knockout power like that i mean they're yoani and jaychik she wasn't putting people out with one shot and she is unbelievably skilled yeah. So just imagine somebody who's not as skilled as her, as her but still very skilled. They just not putting people out with one one punch like that. Now you, you got your Jessica Andrages out there, you know, who who can do it. Not not a woman. It, no, we're, we're talking yeah. about women. We're talking about women, sir. <laughs> we're, we're we're keeping it to let's let's not go off topic now. All right. That's not a woman. All right. No chance. She, but she does have knockout power. She she can knock out men for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As 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 the comments have been saying quite a bit recently, it's like, yeah, that, that guy looks soy, but he'll fuck you up. And I'm like, yeah. Yes, they will. I can say <laughs> someone looks soy and they'll still kick my ass. So I've got no problem with that. <laughs> so, yeah, that is what that is. 
All right, so we got the next one up. Um, again, this one is we got uh, Kalibao versus Silver. Uh this one's kind of tricky as well. Um, uh, I'm gonna side with Josh Kalibao, but I think Silver's really, really good. Like from from what he showed in the Contender series, you know, he's got incredible cardio, and what impressed me about him in particular is. He's able to throw a lot of heat and seem to keep that pressure up for long parts of a fight. You know, he's probably yeah. a lot more fast, twitchy, and explosive than Kalibao is. Who, mm -hmm. let's be kind here, is, you know, he's he's soft-bodied. You know, he's got that very yeah. sort of skinny, fat body Diaz type thing going on. That, mm -hmm. you know, he just is. He's a bit soft there. So, the I, I, now, I'm, I'm not betting on this one, but I'm... Again, I've got a simple reason behind that. I think like Kalib Kaliba, what is appealing to me about him is he's got that UFC experience. And I think that, you know, that having that many fights for the organization is important, you know? Sure. He's also fought yeah. against better guys. Like, and again, most of those fights have been very, very close. He's won some, he's lost some. They are always close fights. Like he never gets starched by anyone. Now, if I'm looking at it from an eye test point of view, Silva on the eye test, looks like somebody who could potentially be really good like i think this has potential again you know when you're looking at fights and you're like oh that could be a split mm -hmm. this is one that feels that way to me because i think kaliba has yeah. got the experience but silver has on the eye test looks like he could be potentially more explosive so yeah over 2.5 might be one to take but i'm gonna edge kaliba with no confidence again yeah um this one this one came down to experience for me as well a and what i saw of them last the last that i saw of both of these fighters um Kalibau, i saw him in a losing effort fighting Lerone Mur murphy and then i saw uh danny silva fighting angel pacheco in the cont contender series and when when silva was on the contender series what i saw was Yes, I saw explosion, but I also saw that Angel was able to confuse him. And I really wasn't sure that he won that fight, to be honest. Um, and then Kalibao, he showed that he belonged at the UFC le level. Lerone Murphy is no joke. He's undefeated for a reason. And I think that Kalibao was able to push him. And because of those two things, even though one lost and one won, and you know, it, it you would think that it would be reversed, but I would actually edge Kalibau, um as well. And I think that he'll start to take the fight over in the third because of that um, experience. But I do think that's going to go off all three rounds. Yeah, I like I like the over 2.5 as well. And again, it's that has the, this has the potential to be a very fun, scrappy kind of fight. So yeah. they might not be names that you're aware of, but should be good for a watch. Uh, now I'm not sure if you know about this next one because this this one was kind of slated a little bit late on the card. Um, uh, we've got Tiago Moises versus Ramirez. I don't know if you managed to. I think you you probably did hear about it. Um, I you. don't. Yeah, I don't think I need to waste waste much time on this one either. Um, obviously, this one's short notice. Uh, Moises was training to fight. Fuck, it's Australian dude. I think it was. It was Brad Riddell. I think he was supposed to fight oh, yeah. Brad Riddell originally on this card. Um, Ramirez for me is not UFC level. And he's clearly being given this opportunity because he's, you know, fair play to him. I love when fighters do this. I know I troll all the time, but whenever somebody is willing to take the risk and get in there, especially with somebody as good as Moises, hats off to you. Mm -hmm. I just think um, from what I saw of Rodri uh, Ramirez, his takedown defense is not great. And Moises is a very good grappler. You know, he's been in there with dudes like Benoit Saint Denis. He's been in there with Makashev and made mm -hmm. it past three rounds with him. I'm taking Moises. I don't think there's much to this. Yeah. Um, really, ultimately, it's just a matter of how he wants to do it. Does he want to grapple? Does he want to strike? Um, because I believe that Moises is levels better than Ramirez. Um, and he'll show him that. Now, I mean, fair play to Ramirez for taking this shot. Um, you never know. You, you mean, as far as from his perspective, you, you have to take all of these opportunities. I mean, you saw like other people who have taken opportunities and lost 
and were able to parlay that into additional opportunities afterwards. You know, Diego Lopez stepped up on, on short notice at one point and lost his fight. And now he's fighting the UFC 300. So, I mean, you got to take these opportunities when they arise, even if it's going to lead to an ass whooping, which is exactly what this is going to lead to. So I think that Moises is um, prime. He needs to win this fight and he needs to win it impressively because mm -hmm. every time they put him in a position to start to step up, he shits the bed. So I think that this is an opportunity to right the ship and then get a fight, a meaningful fight to get him back going in the right direction. Cause I mean, he's 28, he's still young, but now's the time to start make those, making those moves in that division. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree. And like I said, he, um, young enough guy and is reasonably very skilled. I mean, you can see there's a lot of advantages to his game and he has, he's had some tough fights in the UFC. Um, you know, he seems to have been one of those people who was just on the position as people were powering their way through that were on their way to mm -hmm. the top. You know, he's won and lost some dodgy ones, but I think this one with uh, with Romero is a layup. I actually think that that Riddell fight would have been very interesting. That would have been a hard one to pick. So um, yeah. for him to be training for a guy like that, and then you get a guy like Ramirez, you know, should be a start shin. All right, uh, next one, flyweights. And again, I'm, you know, big flyweight fan. I'm always happy to see flyweights on the card. Um, We've got Philho, Philho versus uh, Osborne. Uh, this one, I've got to be honest, was really easy for me too. Now, I do think that Osborne looks very good when he's up against, again, I don't want to be too mean here, but you know, like the lower level toilet bugs in the division. He seems to have that kind of, if he faces people who have skill, clear skill deficiencies, he's dominant and he gets the job done. But I think when he, whenever he comes up with somebody who's got a genuinely strong, skill set in whatever area it is if he fights a good striker or a good grappler he tends to get embarrassed a little bit now if you look at mm -hmm. him like his length his stand up is 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 decent i just i don't like his defense on the ground and philho in particular is very nasty when it gets down there so i think the clear the the, the path is very clear to victory here i think philio is going to get him down and i think he's going to absolutely abuse him like i think Philho by my I'm always a money line person, but if Philho got a sub, it wouldn't surprise me either. I think there's there's something prime there for that. So I'm gonna take Philho for the win. Yeah, it's hard not to go Philho uh, on this one because of the very deficiencies that um Audi Osborne has are what Philho excels in. And so because of those, like it would it would make no sense for Philho to try to play a game that's not the game that he wants to play just take him down submit him um and he tends to allow those things to happen he just uh, fought um what's his name um um Esu, Esu, uh, I'm I'm yeah yeah so i mean you know i'm sure he's training for these very instances but <clears throat> training and fights are different so i definitely think phil ho gets him and I, I think it'll be a submission as well yeah i feel a bit sorry for oswald because like i said i don't think he's bad i just no, think that it's I don't. no it's just you know with flyweight we've talked about flyweights multiple times that like when you um like above a certain level like any everyone in the top 15 in flyweight is just very like very well rounded because you have to be like when you're that fast and that small mm -hmm. you know you can't come in there with one trick because they've all got cardio so mm -hmm. and it's very hard to knock somebody out when you're that small you know it's yeah. it's, it's just that thing that, that the knockout power goes down so you need to, they need to work on skill set from day one they can't just be like well oh, i had a bad training camp i'm just gonna go out there and knock his head off like nah it don't work at flyweight like you know you no. need to be and i think osborne's just a a step below that level of skill set because he's not terrible at anything and he's rangy mm -hmm. he's just he's just that step below it's just it is what it is i, I see this one yeah. going badly for him unfortunately unfortunately all right this this is one i'm quite curious about to get your opinion on because i had a feeling we'd be fairly much aligned i think the first five fights picked themselves fairly reasonably uh we've got a bantamweight fight between nunez and chandler now again this one's tricky for me because uh looking at both of them in their last fights they they both looked horrible um 
Jose, <laughs> jo Josian Nunez before her last fight actually looked fairly decent. You know, first of all, I have to say, strange looking individual. I don't know what's going on with her neck. I don't even know if she has a neck. <laughs> you know, I, I, I might, I might stick a picture up, like I did with um, <laughs> Lady Boy last time. I might, I might do that just to just to highlight exactly what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, she, in in her last one, like, well, sorry, prior to her last one, she was knocking people out and looking really good. Um, but in her last one, you know, she looked very sloppy. She looked kind of easy to hit. But she's fighting Chelsea Chandler, and the thing that I that always Whenever I think of Chelsea Chandler, I'd forgotten who she was for a bit. But then I remembered the G Man, the G Man, the <laughs> yeah. running away. The, yeah. I'm going to say, maybe away. some of you forgot. She literally turned around in the middle of the fight and fucking mm -hmm. ran off in a cage. Yeah. And then you could see, yeah. like, you could see, um, Dumont was like, she was literally like, what the hell's. And then chased after her, which made yeah. it even funnier. It's not like she just let her run away and was just, because if, if someone did that to me in a, in a, in a cage fight, I'd be so confused. I'd, I'd probably stand there and be like, "What? What's the fact that yeah, she belted after something her?" Is happening. Yeah, yeah like, what is something happening? happening that I don't know about? Yeah, yeah, maybe so, there's somebody's coming running? with a gun or something, and she's running. Like, yeah. I'd have been like, I'd have been confused because I've never seen anyone yeah. do that in an actual. You're in a cage. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, where are you running? <laughs> the running part of it is just mad. Like that was one of the funniest. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen um, yeah, yes, in a live event. Sure. <laughs> I can't get that out of my mind. Like, I think that uh, I like to get technical with it, because I think we can here. Like, I think Nunez having the height advantage, but having a similar reach is going to bode really well for her in this fight. Because often what you get with kind of taller, rangier strikers that are up against people that are shorter, but have the same reach as you, is they're punching down. Mm -hmm. And Chandler's not that technical. So I could, like, like there is a strong possibility that if Chandler's able to rehydrate very well, she could come in there much bigger than Nunez, which may help for she may be out grapple her. But I think she's whack. I think Chelsea Chandler is terrible. And for that reason, I think with the the, the matchup the way it is, I think Nunez is gonna catch her. I don't think she knocks her out. I just think she has the better moments. I'm um, going Nunez. Who's the underdog, by the way? point that out that's weird to me so these are two fighters who previously fight fought at featherweight which is interesting to me especially considering how small uh in stature uh Josiane nunez is she fought it at featherweight and actually did pretty well surprisingly and, and and everybody knows her game plan push this person up against the cage so they can't get away back up into boxing range just a slight bit and start throwing like a maniac and I think Chandler's gonna let her do it. <laughs> She's gonna allow her to do Unless it. She tries to run away With, again. I, she might. Not Maybe she'll great. jump over the cage this time. I don't know. But like, <laughs> what I do know is that Nunez is gonna be able to do whatever she wants to, in this fight. And it's kind of unfortunate because I think that I, I don't know if it's a mindset change for Chandler that has allowed these things to happen. But she didn't used to fight like this, and. You know, just to get, in a sense, bullied. Because Josiane, that's what she does in these fights. Is she bullies these girls. And that should be her name, her nickname. I think her nickname is Josie. That's not good. You should go the bully or just bully. Because, I she mean, looks like a that's what she does. Bully as well. You can imagine her as a yeah. little kid coming in there to screw face. and Just like a little pit bull. Just yeah. a bully. Yeah, that should be her nickname. But she's going to win this fight. And you know what? If Chandler doesn't get off the cage, she will get knocked out. Because Josiane is one of those girls that does have that kind of power. How is how is Chandler the favorite? I mean, I, I know this is probably going to get clipped at some point when Josiane is like, you know, laid out or whatever. But I don't see it. I don't get how yeah. they come to this conclusion. She ran away. Yeah, You can't run away in a cage fight and be a favorite against anyone. That should be instantly disallowed. And she's from Stockton. So, like, I thought that she was going to go in there with that mindset. You know, I just imagine Nate, Nick running away. It's not going to happen. So, I don't know. It was weird. But yeah, she's she going to lose this fight. She should. She should. 
All right, so the next one, I am, I've got to tell you, man, I'm really gassed about this next one. We've got a, we've got a lightweight fight between Mike Davis and Natan Levy. Now I'm again, we've never spoken about either of these individuals. I have a strong inkling knowing your personality, sir, that we're going to be along a very similar lines here. Mm -hmm. I think Mike Davis is fucking world-class. And I think that Natan Levy, you know, he, if you look at his body type, you know, no homo dude looks fantastic. Maybe a little bit homo dude looks fantastic. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna put that out there. I don't mind. Um, and like, he looks like he should be outstanding, but he's just, he, the guy's never really impressed me with his skill set. And again, I don't want to shit on a dude because he, again, he's not terrible, but Davis comparatively is just outstanding. Like yeah. so well-rounded. Now the, the only thing this, the only reason why this is a little bit risky is again, Davis hasn't fought in two years which is a little bit concerned. I think it's two years. It might be a little bit longer. Um, but that, you know, you can look at it the other way. That might work in his favor. He could have been off working on things. Could work mm -hmm. in his favor. Sometimes the inactivity can work for you in there. You know, you, you come in there completely injury free. I think Davis is going to dominate this fight. Like, I think Levy's all right, but I, I don't want to... There are so many technical things I can say about Davis in terms of what you can do. I'm just glad to see him back and it's one of those things where like i don't want to oversell this because you never know how a fight's going to go if you're very True. interested in 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 looking at people that from a pure martial arts perspective look at this guy's highlights like he's so technical um i love watching him fight and i think this is going to go badly for natan levy i'm, I'm picking davis so, i yeah. think this is an easy one yeah you know me well um so I knew about Mike Davis before this, but during the pandemic, when I saw him fight Thomas Gifford in the Apex, I believe it was the Apex, or I don't know if it was one of the first shows back. Um, it wasn't but, Apex. I'm pretty, it, could, it might have been. Was it, it, it wasn't on Fire Island, I don't think. But I know that why you might be going down. It was one of the two, but I think it was the Apex. And and I, I I'm a fan of Thomas Gifford from you know what he did prior to the UFC, and he's just a good person um he, yeah and a great fire uh, we, well, we've, we're talking about yeah it. and we we've connected on on twitter he's he's really mm -hmm. cool but the the beating that mike davis put on this man was just legendary and i was like man this dude is like i was like thinking that this guy was going to make a run and then you know he wanted two more fights and then dipped off for a little while and i i agree this dude has all the tools to really make some noise in that division for sure his only loss was when uh gilbert burns was at lightweight i believe mm -hmm. um and that was like let me see what was it four almost five years ago and it's gilbert so burns. i mean yeah it's gilbert burns mm -hmm. like i think that and i do think that uh levy is really good but mm -hmm. it's just this is not the right matchup for him mm -hmm. um this is a, a bad situation and it's not to say that levy can't catch him because Le levy has power mm -hmm. and he's a physical specimen for mm -hmm. sure but i just think that mike davis is going to be too much too technical too proficient at everything that needs to be done and he's going to get him out of there i think he's gonna knock him out um i wouldn't be surprised yeah i hope i don't he think does. that not, i don't, I don't like think him. that levy has that kind of chance yeah I, you know what is it from the the twitter stuff that all the the stuff that he did, you know, um, with uh, Israel and Palestine things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was a little aggressive. <laughs> was a little aggressive. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's been getting a but, lot of like Twitter's going to be, um, viral for all the wrong reasons. If he gets flatlined on, um, he's yeah. going to get, he's going to take the brunt of that. Like, you know, I mean, he is, mm -hmm. he is, as, you know, he's not, he's, he's Israeli, you know, he obviously grew up there. He's, he went a bit hard he did he went a bit hard he did well a bit but is my, he went he went as hard as you can go in that situation yeah yeah he took it to the limit all the way to the red yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. he did so there's a lot of people waiting to see and maybe maybe that's why this matchup has been made maybe you know maybe the it's mma cool. guides are trying to set things right set things right yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I see this going pretty badly for him. Again, he's a decent fighter, but Davis is... Oh, wow, yeah. He's you very rarely see me talk this way about fire. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> so before we get into the main card, here on the screen, as we always do, is a roundup of all the picks we've made on the prelims. Um, for me, there's a lot of minefields in this one. There are a few that are quite clear cut. But, you know, it does make certainly the ones that are minefields... It might not be the best for our bank accounts, but it certainly makes for some excitement. Um, you know, especially for a card that doesn't have a lot of household names. You know, it's a bit light on that. It's nice to have some matchups that are like, oh, we just don't know. So, yeah. All right. So we're going to swiftly move on to the main card. Uh, we've got the weirdest fight I've ever seen in my life. We've got uh, GM3 Gerald Meershot, Meershot versus Brian Barbarena. Now... I had to double double take when this matchup was made because, like Barbarena, as as we kind of know of him, he's a he was already like a very like soft bellied, pudgy looking welterweight, and now now he's fighting at middleweight. Like, how much of a lazy fat fuck do you have to be to be a fat fuck at welterweight, and then you can't make the weight a welterweight anymore? I'm taking GM free. Like I, I know that I know that GM Free's chin is a little bit shitty, but he's not the worst striker in the world. I know people think he's horrible at striking. He's not. Like he's actually got some decent enough boxing. He's just a bit. Sometimes he gets caught in there. You know. Yeah. Barbarina's biggest weakness is his takedown defense, and it's it's GM Free's probably biggest strength. Like so, I think that GM Free is going to ragdoll him, and I think he's going to choke him to death. Like Barbarina has never bridged that gap. This is a horrible matchup for him. It's a strange matchup, like in general. Uh, I think Barbarina needs to get off the chicken wings and get down to uh, lightweight. Forget welterweight. He should have been a lightweight uh, fighter in his career. And the fact that he's fighting at middleweight now is a fucking disgrace. Get on the treadmill, Faye. <laughs> GM3. Yeah, man. GM3 is going to win this fight um, by submission in, in the second round. Um <laughs> and, and I'm really kind of being generous, but I, I like Brian Barbarina's personality. I like him as a person, but when it comes to the dedication it takes to be great at this level, I feel like he's lacking in that particular area and that shows in his physique. So, um, GM three, you know, win, lose or draw. He, he's trying, he's trying. And he's very well versed. And you know what it made me think of is who has better striking, GM3 or Paul Craig? Is it about the same? It's comparable. They, I would argue yeah. that GM3 has better striking than Paul Craig. But they're very it's comparable fighters. They're very comparable. Very, fighters. very. Um, but GM3, like if he, this is a loser leaves town match for sure. Mm -hmm. Whoever loses is out. Um, if Brian Barbarino loses this fight, that's his fourth in a row. They're not going to allow you to stick around. Um, so, mm. unfortunately, I think this will be the last go around for Bar uh, Barbarina in the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. I think we will see that coming too. So, that's, like I said, a very strange matchup. Um, now, this is where, again, we got another ladies' fight. I think this is a bantam weight. I couldn't be bothered to check because, you know, who cares <laughs> yeah like, it's at Benham it's at Benham weight. it's at Benham weight. It's and uh, from one it's, it's another rematch again that nobody asked for um I think I think this is going to be the worst fight on the card tonight I think hands down and the reason why I think that now again I'm open, opening myself to clipped being called a retard you know but <laughs> based on based on the way they fought the first time it was very much a hug fest Plenty of time spent along the cage. They did stand and bang for a little bit. And what you, what I kind of noticed about it is Shiasson is considerably stronger and is kind of like an all-round better striker. Now, now, what I mean by that is like, I think... No, I don't think Kianzad is horrible by any means. I think she's very... She's a very boxing-heavy styled fighter. And I think in MMA these days, I just think Shiasson, as well as having the strength advantage, she's got more of a kicking game. And it's just a mm -hmm. physically stronger person. So I think what I expect to happen from this one, there's going to be a lot of clinching. I think it's going to go the distance. And I can see like the first round in particular being very, very close. Um, 
where um, Kianza is catching Shiasan a little bit more, maybe in the first round. And then in the second and third, I can see Shiasan uh, taking over a little bit more. They're being a lot more clinching. Um, mm -hmm. So I, in a weird way, I'd say if you're somebody who live bets, I'm not somebody who does that personally. But if you're a live better, this might be a good fight to look at because, like I said, I can see um, Shiasan losing that first round. And I just think she's got better cardio and better strength to see out the rest of the fight. So if you're a live better, it might be worth seeing how that one stretches out. And then maybe putting a bet in between round one and round two on Shiasan. But I just think she's she beat her before. And I think she's generally a better mixed martial, art, martial artist. So I'm taking her yeah. to win again. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Chesson is, is a more complete fighter, even though they have strengths in different areas. I think that Chesson, her strengths are just going to outweigh what uh, Kianzad can do. Um, not to mention the, the height difference. They're both pretty big girls. Um, but Chesson is 5'11". You know, she's almost six feet. She's going to be all over her. She already knows, you know, how uh, Kianzad fights. And, um, you know, she's from Dallas, so I got to support. But um, just realistically, she's just a better fighter, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, for Kianzad. I think that she needs to fight somebody that's more her level at this point. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that Chayasan is going to just wash her. Um, by any means, she's gonna have to find her way, but she's gonna win this fight. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think a distance play and just a scrappy, messy, sloppy piss break situation is what we're looking at here. Perfect yeah. time, right in the middle of the main card. All right, uh, now this is another one. Fevel, this is a featherweight uh, scrap. Now we've got next up between um, Rodriguez and Dolgarian. Uh, now we're finally getting to see Rodriguez move up, and I don't know why it took this long. I mean, the guy the guy has missed almost every fight he's had at 155. He's missed weight at almost every single fight he's had at 135. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say this now: I wouldn't be surprised if he missed weight at 145 as well. <laughs> like I'm gonna be real. Like he's an asshole. You think he's that? I think he's that much of a dick. I do. I think he does it on purpose. I genuinely do. Right. I think he gets down to like a certain weight and then he's just like, fuck it. If they turn down the fight, fuck it. I'm going in there fresh as a daisy. And I think that's his game plan. And he's going to need it today because like, uh, I just think the guy, you know, you know how we've talked about weight misses and cheating. We've done videos about it before. It's embodied in mm -hmm. this particular weasel. Like he, he's done it so many times and I'm amazed that the UFC has let it happen that many times because he did it on the contender series twice. He did it and he's done it in the UFC three times and they've still allowed him to fight at 135. I think it's one of those ones where they're like, nah, bro, like you're doing 145. And if you don't make this, you're, you're, you're packing. Like honestly, mm -hmm. because he's a piss taker. He's a habitual piss taker is what he is. Um, <laughs> So, like, for, for many reasons, not just the fact that he's a cheater, I'm going to take Dolgarian because, like, I did actually... I watched this fight against Francis Marshall with particular interest because I've seen this guy... I saw this guy a lot on the regionals. And mm -hmm. he was the underdog in that fight with Fra Francis Marshall. And I could... It's another one I was telling you about with... Um, who was that dude we were talking about before who made me a lot of money and he was the underdog? Well, he was the... He was the... Uh, he was the uh, favourite... Oh, it was a welterweight guy that the uh the hawaiian dude doesn't matter anyway um somebody we talked about on a card a couple of fights ago brett of ours or no 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 he, he was a he was a welterweight um hmm. he lost he lost his last fight as well against um i don't know it doesn't matter um i'll pop it up so i'll have a little note down in the corner of who it was but it was a very similar situation where dolgarian was like a big underdog against francis martin i couldn't believe it i ca i i bet a, a bucket load on him because I, like, I know how good he is. And he went in there mm -hmm. against Fra Francis Marshall, who's really good, and he murdered that man. You know? Um, the only thing that scares me a little bit about this fight is, again, it's stuff we've talked about before with, like, Dalgarian has had six professional MMA fights, right? Mm -hmm. And he's won all of them in the first round. And the thing about Rodriguez is... I think Rodriguez is actually good, despite all the shit-talking I've just said about him and how scummy he is. 
like he does he's a good fighter like he's durable he's tough to get out of there like i was a bit worried in his first round um with that the, the boy the 18 year old boy um who ragdolled him a little bit and just gassed oh, himself out yeah no. who, who got who gassed himself out a little bit but what worries me is that i would not be surprised if he manages to get out of the first round with dolgarian who is incredible like very good wrestler like i think he was d2 mm -hmm. level wasn't he um, yeah, I think so. At an elite, at an elite school, and was very like, um, he's a very good striker as well. Got a lot of pop in his strikes. I worry though, what happens if Rodriguez gets out of that first round? So, so the way that I can probably see it going is I could see Dolgarian dominating in the first round, winning the second round, and then potentially losing the third round. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. he's going to starch out Rodriguez like everyone seems to be thinking he will. Because I think this is his toughest fight yet. And as good as Dolgarian is, I think Rodriguez is going to be hard to get out of there. And he's probably going to come in there five pounds overweight as well, the prick. So <laughs> I'm going to take um, I'm going to take Dolgarian, but I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people that I've seen talk about this are suggesting. I'm going to go Dolgarian though, because I think he's good as well. Tricky. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go Rodriguez. Um, I, I I do recognize all of his weight issues, hundred percent. Um, he's definitely had a problem pushing away from the table, but um, I do think that he is a a good fighter, and he showed me a lot as far as his mental game after being thrown around by Raul Rosas Jr. <clears throat> he could have given up and and just allowed you know what you know was supposed to happen to happen but he didn't you know mm -hmm. he showed that he was the adult in the cage and he w was able to inflict his game on Raul Rosas so i think that um he showed a lot of maturity there and i hope he, he shows that same maturity when he goes to the scales this time but i'm going to show him a little bit of faith and i'm going to go with Christian Rodriguez on this one but I have no faith in this, and I wouldn't put any sort of money on it at all. It's a fantastic fight. It's a fantastic. Like they're they're both very very good. Um, and yeah. one thing that I I forgot to mention about Rodriguez as well is um one aspect of his game that I really like. He never panics, and you kind of alluded to that with the Raul Rosas Jr. fight. Like when Rosas Jr. was ragdolling him around, he just had this expression on him like, "All right, I'm gonna wait for you to finish, and then you're not gonna you're not gonna beat me down here." I'm just going to stay calm and then when the fight's back where I want it to be I'm going to take over and there's a lot to be said about fighters that have that kind of mentality and we mm -hmm. haven't seen Dolgarian in any kind of danger and that's always a concern whenever you get guys that go in there with like a first round they're first rounding people over and over and it's like wow great what happens when that doesn't happen yeah and that's true. always the worry um, and Rodriguez has been in there with some dudes so mm-hmm great fight again this is not one i'm betting on um but because you know you can get dolgarian at very good odds and rodriguez is actually the the underdog i think he's like a plus 175 so if you're a rodriguez guy this could be a good opportunity to make some money if you have real faith in him which i wouldn't blame you for having yeah, yeah. so yeah i, th I do think dolgarian is going to do slightly more damage but we'll see all right next one light heavyweight again so we got OSP versus Neza Chukwu. Uh what are we doing here? Man. <laughs> What's going on? It's an interesting fight, man. Um it's interesting in the in the sense that I actually had thought OSP retired. Um, but I guess he's gonna go ahead and finish that contract out. And you can blame um, him. he's probably making a decent amount at this point. I mean, yeah, he fought for a belt, you know. Can, so, can I say something about the misconception that people have before we get into what was, is obviously going to happen in this fight? Um, yeah. People are kind of confused about the fact that um, OSP makes quite a lot of money in the UFC. I don't think they understand how UFC, the pay structure works. Yeah. Like, for those of you who don't understand it, usually the reason why guys like, um, you know, like Andre Arlovsky, for example. Mm hmm. You know how much he gets paid to fight? I have any idea? I know it's a grip. I know it's a lot. Um, he's the last one I checked. He's on like four hundred to show. 
400,000 to show. Yeah. Andre Oloski. And it's not because he's a draw. When you've been in around the, around the UFC for that time, what people don't realize is the more fights you have, your pay incrementally goes up. So you always get paid. Yeah. I think there's a certain percentage involved. So you can imagine for somebody like OSP or Arlovsky, who's been around for God knows how many fights, they have incrementally been getting paid more as they get more contracts than they get. So that's what just where it, I, I thought that was just worth mentioning because, you know, I've, I, I, I don't usually watch fight breakdowns, but I did see part of the Guru's one last night. Um, and he was like, I don't know what they're doing, pay, paying OSP that much money. And I'm like, bro, it's just, that's not, you really think they would, you know, you know how the UFC are with money. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's the way companies work. It's just how companies you know? are. You're, it's incent it's yeah. like loyalty and incentive pay is kind of what it is at a basic level. It's just the longer mm -hmm. you're with a company, the more money you get. Yeah, because like in reality, OSP could have left during, you know, maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. He could have left and went to Bellator and been champ. Mm. Like he was that good. You probably good. think of him more highly than I do, but. Uh, no, I think he was that good. Like, um,. And I'm I'm comparing him to who they had at that time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think the him against Phil Davis over there back, you know, five years ago would have been an interesting fight. Him against Ryan Bader would have been interesting. You're definitely he could right catch about Bader. I, I'm quite a Davis yeah. fan. I quite like Phil Davis. I think he's all right. Oh, I think that Phil Davis is. Uh, he's not well was, beat. He's not like wow, but he's good. But he was elite for a little bit, for mm. a brief period of time. He was elite. Um. At what he did, not well yeah. rounded completely, but but he's pretty good. So he I think something that, that was dangerous. Yeah, I think that there there is um, definitely a loyalty bonus that that he's getting mm -hmm. in how much he gets paid, and I wouldn't blame him. If there's two fights on your contract, you see, yeah, I'm gonna get all my money. Yeah, yo, I'm getting mm -hmm. mine. That's like a, that's, that could potentially be anything up to a million if he can win for two or three fights. Yeah. I think he's on like 180, 190 to show. That doubles if he wins. He somehow yeah. catches um Mr. Shukwu. Taking on if he gets him plus. down, yeah. You 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 think he can't get that Von Flu choke on uh, Zuchuku's long neck? Yes, he can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen to. I don't think that's gonna happen on Saturday night. No, he's gonna get knocked out. But <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know? Do you know what the worst thing about this was? We've literally been building him up for what feels like about an hour. And then we're like, no, nah, he's going to get battered. Anyway, moving on. You know what I mean? It was a legacy build up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, you're right, though. I, I don't know. Yeah, he's going to get knocked out. He's going to get smacked. <laughs> but sucks. the thing is, yeah, would you, most people would get knocked out for 180, especially if you've been knocked out loads of times. Sure. What's one more? Yeah, why not? What's one more? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to know who my grandkids are in like 10 years anyway, so I might as well do it in a nicer chair and in a nicer <laughs> retirement room. Do you know what I mean? Just saying. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Have yeah. that lobster then, fed in through the straw instead of the usual, you know, whatever they do. <laughs> might as well. Yeah, I, 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 I think hurt. it's, I think this is going to be a, I, I don't know, I don't know about a starching because there's a chook who is, you know, He's decent. He's a decent fighter. He's big. He's not really a KO artist, big. but I think he's gonna um, catch OSP at some point. Just yeah. I can see it up against the cage, maybe. That's exactly. And him what I'm just thinking. volume knocking him out, knock on or, or like a standing TKO, where OSP is just kind of you know out of it but mm -hmm. not going down. I could see that. I'm picturing it in my mind already. It's gonna be sad, but. I'm not that invested. That's the way the game goes. I like OSP, but like, it's, I, will, I will say before we head to the next one, minus 500. I'm not sure about that shit. Yeah, that's steep. I'm not sure um, about that. That's a big fuck you to very, OSP. Very steep. But like, I would have said minus three, maybe. They might have tempted. Yeah. You know, they might have, they might have caught the rat with the cheese with that one. But at minus 500, I'm not going near that. No. All right, so co-main. Uh, right, so we've got uh, welterweight. We've got battle versus Ange Lusa. Uh, now, so far, um, everyone that I've picked as my dark horse this year has got the job done. So I've had like a few, I think half of them have stepped up this year and they've all won. So 
for anyone who saw that video, they'll know that I, I picked Prime Battle as my welterweight dark horse. It wasn't one of the easiest ones to do because welterweight outside the top 10 is dog shit. But I, can't, I picked <laughs> Battle. It might have been by default, but I did pick Battle. Um, now, Angelusa does have some things about him that are obviously um, appealing. You know, he's got... Um, he's reasonably powerful. He does have a decent chin on him. But I think he tends to slow down quite a bit when he's getting slapped and i don't i just don't like the heart on him um i like brian battle a lot i mean he's got a nice grappling game he's very rangy for the division mm -hmm. and i think generally he's somebody that's really underlooked as a or over uh, overlooked or underlooked whatever you want to say as a fighter very underrated and i think that he's going to put it on looser in this fight you know i think he's going to win pretty comfortably it wouldn't surprise me if he got a finish, but I think I can see him getting past the first round where it's a bit close and then dominating out the last two. That would be the more conventional way to go for it. But it wouldn't surprise me if he got him down and choked his ass out as well. So I'm going Brian Battle for the win. Yeah, um, I'm very, very high on Brian Battle. Um, you know, I put him in that. Uh, on the UFC 300 card when we talked about that um, before that was you created. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Brian Battle is somebody that I agree is you know, as his skills continue to improve um, he's he's a person that can definitely make some noise in that division. Mm -hmm. And Lusa is kind of one dimensional when it comes to the way that he attacks um, and I think that Brian's going to pick up on that and mm -hmm. You know he'll be able to snipe him from the outside as long as he can stay away then we'll have those periods of time where lusa is pushing him up against the cage we can't quite take him down the referee will break it and then brian battle will start piecing him up again so i think that's probably how the fight's going to go and brian battle's going to comfortably outpoint him unless lusa allows him to get into a little bit of a firefight and i think if they do that then brian battle's just going to knock him out yeah, I th yeah, I think what you're alluding to there is like, I just think outside of a, he gets caught. Because uh, the thing is there, when you watch Brian Battle, he sometimes looks almost gangly in there and sort of a little bit uncoordinated. But he is a lot more technical than people give him credit for. And he does have like a very mm -hmm. decent fight IQ. Like he's very good at knowing how to manage the distance and more importantly, when to go for takedowns and then what to do when he gets them there. Like, he's very yeah. brutal once he gets you down. He's not somebody who will just lay on you um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, try to sap your energy that way. He's landing ground and pound. He's looking for positions to find subs in. I think he's a lot better than he appears, you know, because he just, yeah. he, he looks a bit goofy. And, you know, despite the fact that he keeps fumbling nicknames over and over again, I trust <laughs> him. I mean, he's going to get it done. I mean, he's going to win. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad, and I'm also glad that he's fighting in welterweight instead mm -hmm. of at middleweight which you know i think that he was in the tough house at middleweight yeah glad he's fighting at welterweight that's way better for him because again he, he he does look a little bit loose skinned even at welterweight but you can see he's putting the work in like his physique has changed during his time in the ufc like you can see he's get. i sound like i check out dudes a lot i'm kind, I'm kind of um i need to be careful do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're the, troll, the trolls have been Ellen coming out in the more last Ellen week. Page than, <laughs> more Ellen Page than Elliot right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, it's my fault, you know. I'm leaving. I'm leaving the breadcrumb. Uh, the breadcrumbs out hard. Like you know, you know, you can't play the game that I play and not expect to get absolutely roasted. You know, it's well deserved. Yeah. But yeah, I like. Um, <laughs> I like battle in this one. I think he's going to be good. I think you'll get it done. A loser yeah. is dangerous, but you know. I like the odds on this one as well. I think you can get decent money on um, on Monsieur Battle. Um, all right, mm -hmm. main event time, heavyweight. We got Tai Bam Bam Tuivasa versus Marcin Taibura. Now, um, now this main event has been copping a lot of shit, um, and I don't actually think it's that terrible. Like, I like, no. I'll, I'll put it this way: yeah, if this fight was like nestled on any main card of a pay per view. I don't think people would bat an eyelid about it. I mean, if you saw it like fifth, fourth, fifth fight on any pay-per-view, you'd be like, yeah, that mm -hmm. has the potential to be really fun. You know? Yeah. 
And that's usually what my benchmark is when I think, all right, what would be a good fight night main event? It's like, would it look out of place on a, on a pay-per-view? And this fight would not. I just think the fact that the rest of the card's a bit stinky or appears a bit stinky on paper, that's why this is getting so much heat. Now, I'm going to mm-hmm. be honest. I was going to... I was going to pick Ty Bura when this fight was first um, announced. Like, I think his... I think his takedown game's pretty good. And, like, he does have a very smothering ground game, which... Um, Tuivasa has struggled with kind of in the past. I, I kind of see Tybura as like the king of the bottom feeders, though. You know, he's one of those guys mm-hmm. who at, at heavyweight, all the guys who are kind of beneath the top ten, he looks fantastic against dominates. Because you know, most yeah. heavyweights are very unskilled, and Ty, um and um Tybura has some skill. Like he's not. It would be unfair to say he's a bottom feeder heavyweight, but there's a skill discrepancy, unfortunately, for him. When you kind of get into that top seven, top eight, that he can't really breach, and I think um, while t- uh, Ty does have some limitations to his game, the trick that he does have to his game is devastating. And I mean, we've seen it against the likes of he had Cyril Gan very badly hurt, um, which I think is a considering what a great striker Cyril Gan is at heavyweight, his elusiveness, his movement. He had mm-hmm. him on ice skates at one point, and yep could have had him out of there and i think what the killer thing in this fight for me that's really pushing me towards uh to Ivasa, what is a, f- a few things but the main thing is i think his leg kicks calf kicks in particular are fucking nasty and i think yeah. tybura has that game where he does step very heavy on that leg and he often does it to set up and look for it like he'll try and throw out a jab in order to set a take take down up but he, he, he stands very heavy on that leg and, ty, and Tui Vasa works the leg very, very well, especially the calf. So I can see that being a factor. But also, like even though Tui Vasa is res- relatively easy to get down, he's quite good at getting back up. He's not easy to keep down. And the yeah. thing is, I think in a fight like this, where there's three, four, five rounds, I mean, it's not going to go five. We know it's fucking not going to go five rounds. But I just think with the amount of time that there is Tui Vasa is going to have ample time to find that shot. And when he hits you, I don't care who you are. If he catches you, you're getting you're getting slept. And I just think that that's the logical way this is going to go. I think in order for yeah. Tui, in order for Tibera to win, he's got to play as the perfect match and and get him down when he gets him down and drain him out and, and avoid that punch all night. And I don't think he will. I'm going Tui yeah. Vasa. Yeah, Tui Vasa has the equalizer. I, I I think that Tybura is exactly what you said. He's he's right there at the bottom, the eleven through fifteen range. He's you the know, king he's of that little mini well. division. Yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, he's yeah that little mini division. He is the champ. Mm-hmm. But once you start to go into the real contenders, like <laughs> nah, bro. Uh, and Ty Tui Vasa, he he's the same thing that. Um, Derek Lewis had the same thing that Mark Hunt had. Mm-hmm. He they have an equalizer. It's like you may be winning the fight, but as soon as he touches that chin, or even where anywhere near the chin, just in the vicinity of your chin, you're gonna go down and he's gonna finish the fight. And with him adding those legs leg kicks to his game, that makes him not one dimensional. Um, you know, he's able to throw knees, he he goes to the body. Um, he'll, you know, press the action instead of having to uh, just counter. Like he's really developed his game, and then most of all, he hasn't he he doesn't give up on himself when he gets taken down. That's what you see a lot in Derek Lewis, which to me is a great comp for him because mm-hmm. they have a lot of similarities. Um, he Derek Lewis a lot of times will give up on himself when he gets taken down. Ty Tuivasa doesn't, and even if he gets taken down in this fight. I don't think that Tybura is going to be able to do anything that's going to get a finish and take him away from that danger. And as long as the clock is running and there's time, Tuivasa is extremely dangerous. And I think he does find him. I think he does knock him out because all his his fights end up in knockouts. So this will be the same. And then we'll we'll get Shuey, hopefully. Um, be nice somehow. to see that again. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. And he's such a likable yeah. guy as well. He's just... 
Like, he is. Yeah, he's the more marketable person, and he he does it by being fun and not a prick, which is very hard yeah. to do in this game because he's he's. It is. He just he just he's just got that kind of he's got that natural star quality, that cult staff quality, you know. Yeah. I think everyone wants him to. And the thing is, it's not like Tybura is a like a. He's not a likable uh, guy either. You know, he's got some skills to him, and he's 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 for everyone. He's somebody who doesn't turn fights down. I just think mm -hmm. with what they've both what they're both bringing to this, I think two of us is gonna find it. You'll find it at some point. Yeah. Should be good. I think so. It should be good. Yeah. All right. So as always. Uh, here is an overview of the main card and our picks for them. Um, it's it's not usual that we um, often pick so many of the same fights. I mean, it's it's unlike us to be honest. We, we some, usually we, have we, quite we, a few differences. We had a few differences. We had mm. a few differences there. Yeah. But I mean, there's some of them that are just no brainers. Like, yeah, logic cannot. We cannot allow logic to uh, to or a lack of logic to get in the way. You know. Yeah. You know, it just it is what it is, uh, and I'm very um, like I said, I, I'm I, I love I love uh, MMA in general as much as I bitch and complain about it. Um, yeah, I do love it, and I'm I'm going to enjoy this card along with everyone else. Um, sure. Before we head off, uh, is there anything you've got in the pipeline that you want to tell people about? Yeah, um, got a couple of our videos. Um, our uh, yeah, our no uh, videos coming out specifically the one about Volkanovski. So if you're a Volkanovski fan, uh, definitely tune into that one because um, we say some not always nice things about him. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to echo that. We've, we've, I've got a few, um, yeah, on all episodes that I'm releasing, but the two, two of them that were released before this video, actually. Um, and I do have the, uh, the drunk along that's going to become a regular oh, thing. Yeah. There's not going to be uh there's there's going to be no whiskey involved this time. Uh, that was a mistake that I'm um I'm just going to say by the by the end of that stream. Old. I mean, I got like 4 uh, 4 hours 30 minutes into it. I think it was a bit longer than that even. And I was like, "Fuck me, where's this?" Like I forgot that what I was doing half the time, you know. I forgot that I was live streaming, which is very dangerous. So that's usually when the pants come off and I'm like anything could have happened at that point. So I'm like I need to be wary of that. <laughs> so I think I'll stick to that. It, it will be the drunken stream, but it won't be the, you know, it won't be the annihilation drunken stream. Yeah. It will just be, there will be some pacing involved next time. But you live, you learn. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You live, you learn. Yeah. Gotta try it out. But yeah, if, you, if you're somebody <laughs> who's new new here, and again, I want to say thank you to the, to, um, because both of us have seen some attention in, on our channels recently. And that is Absolutely. because of the people who are here. Without the people who are here regularly checking us out, we wouldn't get that opportunity, you know, because mm -hmm. it's how it works. Like when you've got people who come back and regularly um, watch your stuff, it helps too. So if you're somebody who does that, keep liking, keep um, commenting. It helps. Like apparently, it helps to push things along and the proofs in the pudding. You know, we both had good. Um, we both had good interactions uh, with the channel over the last month or so, where things have taking a little jump you know we're hoping yeah. to see more so keep so keep helping us on this journey we we appreciate all of you and sure. keep looking out for new stuff because there always is have a great one and i'll see you for the uh, the next drunken one and check out at making a walk mma on youtube in a sure. bit